So a while back, we looked at a working debug screen that was made by Lucas PAH, which introduces a bunch of useful information for your Minecraft world, just by simply clicking F3. Now this will work on the Bedrock Edition on Windows 10, and even mobile devices as well. Now I do want to point out, that if you're playing on Windows 10 by default, you do have to click F8. But the creator did actually supply us with an executable, which will allow us to change it to F3. And that's going to be extremely useful, because I know that many people may not want to reach all the way to F8. Now, as you can see on the very top, we have the name of the game, which is Minecraft, obviously. And they will even tell you if you're playing in the beta or not, which I also really do love. And they'll tell you which mode they are in. So you see, we're in creative mode right now. But if I switch it to survival mode, or adventure mode in this case, then it's actually going to tell you that you're in survival mode. Okay, so it doesn't really tell you that you're in adventure mode, because obviously adventure mode is survival mode. They're kind of almost the same. Now the next piece of information that we have is E. Now I believe that E might be entities. So if I were placed on a bunch of entities, yeah, that's exactly what that is. So let's say I spawn in a bunch of cows right here. Well, take a look at that number. We are now at E42, which means entities, as I mentioned earlier. So if you have a bunch of mobs in a certain area, like if you have a mob trap that's all clogged up, then you're gonna know exactly how many mobs are in that area. And then we have the game Efficiency, which is running at 100% 30 FPS. We have the vanilla server, which is at 20 ticks. Now, next up is gonna be the dimension. So right now we're inside the overworld. And obviously if I were to switch it over to the nether, or if I were to go to the end, then that would actually display what dimension that you're in. So this really won't be the most useful piece of information, because obviously, I think you would know if you were in the end or inside the nether. I mean, it's not really hard to actually notice that. But then we have still the coordinates. Now, if you decide to turn off show coordinates, so even though you turn that off, it's still gonna be there. But the only thing that will not happen, it will not update until you decide to turn it back on. We are now updating that in real time, which is very good. But then we have facing direction. So this will tell you which way that you're facing. So then we have the light level, which the light level, if you were to switch it to nighttime, then that will actually update in real time. So let's say I come over here and I switch it to midnight. Well, it'll tell you that the light level is now at four. If I switch to nighttime, then it's gonna be at nine. Then if I were to make it back to day again, then it's gonna back to 15. And that's absolutely great. Because let's say you're making a mob farm and you wanna know how much light that's getting and it'll tell you how much light that's inside of there. But with that being said, we also have the biome. Now the biome is actually quite interesting because if I come over this way, this does not actually update on the below ground biomes. But if you're above ground, then this will work just fine as you saw a second ago. So we're inside the forest and it says forest. Then it went over the plains because we're inside the plains. We're obviously inside the lush cave biome, but the creator has not actually updated this past 1.16. So you're not gonna be able to know exactly what the underground bombs are. So try to get that in mind. And then next we have difficulty, which difficulty obviously it's actually self-explanatory. It'll tell you which difficulty that you're on. Then we have day. Now right now we're on day four of our micro world. So let's say I go and switch it from midnight and then day again, then that's gonna update to the next micro day. And then looking on the other side, it'll tell you your operating system, which the game is using C++, and then we have times 86 and 64. We have graphics, which is the render dragon, direct 3D 11 plus. We have the UI type, which is desktop, and then it'll tell you the input type. Then we have the world settings. So is it raining? It's gonna switch to true or false. So let's say I switch the weather to rain. Well, I'm gonna do that right now. And now it says true, because it is raining inside your world. If I switch back over to clear, then any moment now, it should change to false. Okay, there we go. Then we have the moon phase, which is gonna be the phase of the moon. Now, if you didn't know, the moon actually does change texture every nighttime, which is actually a really cool feature, because you can get crescent moons, you can get full moons, new moons, and but this time, we have the waxing crescent. But then we have is in village, so let's head all the way back over to this village again. And then it should actually change to true. Uh, come on, change to true. Well, we are inside of a village, but it is switch to true. So it turns out you need to place down villagers for this to work. But then we have is underground. So let's say I dig all the way down here. 
then it's gonna tell us if we're underground or not. And wow, look at this cave underneath the village. But this is actually a pretty cool looking cave. But obviously, if we're inside the cave, it will switch it to true. What in the world? What did I just find? I have no idea what's going on within this new bedrock beta, but it's just been a big old mess, and I hope the Mojang fixes this, because this is absolutely insane. But with that being said, that is actually it for everything that the sad on this introduced to us, but let me go show you on how you can install this. Now in order to install this, make sure that you've activated the behavior pack, which I have done so right here. Now if you do want to remove the debug screen from your world, then click on my packs, and you also have the Java debug screen removal tool, which whenever you activate this, it will go to remove the debug screen from your world. But make sure that you've deactivated this first. Then go up to resource packs, and then activate the Java debug screen for Bedrock. Now if you click on it again, we have this gear icon. Now depending on the type of texture pack that you might be using, you might want to change the resolution. So let's say you're using a Super HD pack that's all the way at 512 by 512. Well, you can come over here and you can switch the debug screen resolution to 512 by 512. But that's only if you're using that type of texture pack. And the same thing goes for 256, 128, 64, 32, and 16. But by default, whenever you do activate it, it will be at 512. So make sure you switch it to 16 by 16 or whatever resolution that you want. And also make sure that you have experimental gameplay on, creator features, and modding capabilities. And that's basically it on how you can install that to your world. But I still cannot believe this bug. This is getting out of hand. But down below in the comments, go let me know what you think of this. And if you enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here and turn notifications on. And I will catch you next time. Goodbye.